Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Pivoting to the cloud is a challenge. Which platform you choose is an important decision. I'm Bernie Cassie from Oracle Marketing, and here with me today is Vish Anand, data management subject matter expert. Vish, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Bernie. Amazon AWS pioneered the cloud. How do we compete with them? No, that's a, that's a great question. Um, there's no doubt that Amazon started the cloud itself a decade ago, approximately. And when they started, they started as infrastructure as a service. So basically, they went to customer and say, why don't you just use our storage, compute, and network, and run your application. And by the way, you could pay by the drop. There's no licensing. So a lot of tier three type of applications that were sitting in a data center, remember, organizations are challenged within their data center to keep it and grow it, you know, it, it's not elastic, right? No. Once you run out of room, you run out of room. Or electricity. Or electricity costs, so there's, and labor costs, all of that is associated. So you think about it for a moment and say, well, I could take some of these applications that's not as important right now or mission critical and just move it to the cloud and move it to Amazon and let them manage it and I'll just pay based on when I keep the lights on. Makes a lot of sense. You fast forward now, they, their strategy started at the foundation level and now they provide database as a service, platform as a service. So they are the 800 pound gorilla when it comes to the cloud, there's no doubt about it. However, Bernie, the cloud is still maturing. The cloud has not matured yet. So when we looked at the cloud industry, we started to hire some of the brightest engineers and internally we have the brightest engineers to develop the next generation cloud. What the people that came from Amazon, people that came from Microsoft and Google and built these cloud-based model and their thought process, well, we have to do things a little different. So we released the next generation cloud infrastructure. It's very important for customers to understand. There are key differences there. We have bare metal, which can do throughputs and IOPS of millions of transactions per second. We don't have hypervisor of virtualization on every layer which could be costly in terms of being performed. However, we do it at the network level. So our, our agility in terms of our cloud, based on provisioning, speed, you know, you could start small for application development testing on a container. This is a new thing called microservices. And then you can move up to the higher throughput platforms. So it's, it's you know, the competition has to be at the service level. We, right. need to, we need to make sure we educate the customer that we are different in terms of what we're doing on the infrastructure side. So are you saying it's an optimized platform that we're offering to the, to the market? Absolutely, it's optimized from ground up. And then remember, we're also a software company. So remember, we've married software and hardware together. And that's the best of the breed you can get. You get native throughput, now you apply it to the cloud, and you pay for whatever you're, you're using. And we have that capability. So from a data processing perspective, it's an important aspect that we should lead by. This is our strength. And when, you, when, you, when we compete against Amazon, you don't compete just on IS, you compete on the other services. So data is so important around the modernization, digitalization, socialization, you know, providing information, to your customer as well as gaining actionable insights internally is very key. And we have the best of breed across all those different platforms. So absolutely, we need to make sure we educate our customers that, yeah, you could, you, they've pioneered the cloud, but when you, when, you, when you go towards that cloud vehicle, what are the services you're going to have? I mean, what's the workload mechan mechanism you're going to run? Is it going to work on AWS? Or is, you know, I, I frankly feel that depending on the workload you're running, um, we have the best of the breed across the board. Well, it sounds like integration is very important. Is that the cloud services you're talking about? Are there additional cloud services? Which is most important? How would you actually go about well, this? Well, those are all good questions, but it's, it's everything, all of the above. So when you do build your data platform and now you're ingesting information, it needs to be integrated. And then you need to develop called the next generation application. So think about microservices, for example. In the olden days, you would develop, it goes through a life cycle through UAT, testing, development, and then it goes to production and so forth. We don't have time for that anymore. We don't have time for that, so it's called an agile framework. Now imagine you're able to package your application, all the dependency of code is packaged in the application, and now you can orchestrate it through our cloud seamlessly. So think about the risk we're taking off the table. 
on a container base. Right. We, we have those capabilities from an application development. Now, everything else has to align to the Agile framework. The industry calls it DevOps. Yes. DevOps is about optimizing development and operational. It's, it's not a product, it's more of a methodology and it's a process. So we, we thought all, a, a lot about this when we built our next generation cloud. And then we're pu putting autonomous functionality. So for example, our autonomous database, which we completely compete against AWS Redshift. And we differentiate ourselves completely because we don't provide, um, we, don't, we, don't take, we take a lot of the operational cost away from you. So the labor work that's required on AWS, right, you need the skill sets, you need to somebody to manage the, the um, design of it, it's got to be optimized. We're telling our customers, load the data and run your queries and that's it. And then scale however, however you want and based on priority. So there, there are some key differentiators, but I think once a customer gets a feeling and, and understands our journey in our cloud, they'll see a vast amount of difference. Vast amount of difference. And we're not talking about a lock-in. We're, we're actually talking about integrating with other cloud services or other platforms or other means to integrate with your data warehouses that you have to manage the full full data source, the data, yeah. lake, data lake actually. Yeah, I think and that's a great point, Bernie. Um, we don't lock in, I mean that's an excellent point because AWS will lock you in. So once you, you promote and you start to commit to that vehicle from an IT perspective, you move towards AWS, whether it's good or bad, you're stuck. Right. In a way, and now you have to kind of figure out how do I get back if need be, or if my information that's very sensitive, do I really want to put that? We give you the best of both worlds. Right. And then on like cloud at customer is all about providing the same look and feel uh, for our cloud on premise behind your firewall. So yes, I have customers will say, well, I don't know about my data. Well, it could stay on your firewall, but you have the ability to also minimize your data center. Yes. As well. So I, I think it's the best of both worlds. I mean, I think personally, organization, especially the enterprise world, are going to have multiple vendors of cloud. So they need some sort of broker in the middle. We do a great job. We actually have a, a security tool that could broker identity across multiple clouds as well. And then our integration tools also works well across the board. So absolutely, we give you the flexibility in terms of how you want to carve up your cloud ar ar you know, architecture and your vision. We don't lock you in. I mean, I think that sounds appealing, that you can have uh, an aggressive strategy, but still have options, and the yeah. options like, will, will work. Absolutely, and don't, don't forget about security too, right? True, so true. We, we've got the best of the products and services and suites around identity management across all the way to data encryption and the wire itself. So that's, that's very important. And then governing the data too. You know, who can see what and why should they be seeing it, auditing, all that is available. But I think also the next services that we're providing, which AWS, again, unsure what they're doing because they don't, ha they don't own an intellectual property. We own our code. This is an open source world. So yeah, you could grab open source and put your facelift on it, but this, the, the, the actual experience is going to be a lot different versus someone owning the code can support it. Remember, support. What happens if your system is not working? We've been supporting our products for decades. So it's not like this tremendous change that you've got skill sets around Oracle and you've got to now shift the entire skill sets. No, you have to do that in AWS. So if you look at specifically a data platform services AWS, they have something called Redshift, yes. as I talked about. It's a commoner database for analytics. They have something called EMR. That's a map reduce, elastic map reduce. That's their Hadoop implementation. And then they have S3 as the object store. This is an extremely common architecture over there. Folks are running this, but they're all different code lines, you know. And and we're we're fully native across the board. So don't throw your skill sets out, you know. And uh, sometimes people think of us as legacy, and 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 they're per, you know, from their perspective and perception. But again, we're not. I mean, we just introduced autonomous database. Who who could even say, you know, that you can run your warehouse with pretty much hands off? That's think, amazing. Think about that. That's cutting edge. No, absolutely. The other thing, Bernie, that differentiates ourselves uh, besides our native code, we're also open architecture as well. We, we've got Java components. We leverage other open source technology as well, such as Spark. We've integrated with Cloudera, which is an HDFS component. So we have open source technology, but we marry it with uh, our, our technology, but we also bridge it with native um, 
connectors too. So, you, so customers don't have to do all that homework in order to just promote some sort of ecosystem. We are doing a lot of that work and that comes from our support um, and I think that's invaluable. The other piece is the industry applications. Now think about your healthcare, financial, we have the best of breed around the applications. So as customers come to our SaaS model, they get to enjoy our pass, platform as a service, and they get to enjoy our infrastructure as a service as well. So something AWS cannot talk about. So I think that's those are invaluable functionality that we're providing as well. So that sounds like a great additional benefit. What else can a large organization provide to our customers? I'll tell you, I mean, besides technology, Bernie, we have over 400,000 customers. We have 40,000 developers. We have 25,000 partners. We've got partners that need to promote their uniqueness in the industry, and we're providing all the cloud tools. So when you look at our, as I talked about, our infrastructure differentiating, our data platforms, our security, our application, it's the people at Oracle can differentiate it. We have some of the best architects in the world. Um, we've solutioned incredible amounts of different, different architectures within enterprise grade solutioning. So we need to keep that momentum going. We've got the partners, we have 40,000 40, developers, over 400,000 customers. You know, the red stack is fairly strong, so I think personally, you know, that, that's, that speaks volumes. It certainly does. I would say people should be giving Oracle a look for their cloud implementations. Absolutely, I think so. Vish, well, thank you very much for, for joining me today and discussing this and helping people understand the important differences between Oracle and Amazon AWS. No, thank you for having me, Bernie. I appreciate it. You're very welcome.